You guys, welcome to an all-new week of So Bad It's Good. I know last week's release schedule was a little wonky. I was in New York, didn't plan on uh, doing everything that I did, but I'm back. I'm refreshed, kind of. That's a lie. I'm not, but I'm happy to be here, and I'm so excited to have uh, our returning guest. It's been two weeks. It, it's way too long. The last time we talked, we literally were joking about kyle richards and her potential bat you know potential new friend morgan wade before anything was released the day after we released that they made a statement that you know the whole separation thing came up so much has happened in these last two weeks that i cannot wait to get the opinions on of somebody whose twitter account just got hacked so of course we're going to talk about what happened with that so we've got the one and only sophie ross back with us sophie what the hell is going on with you so much has happened first of all second of all yes my Twitter got hacked, unfortunately. Um, I Did don't you know click on a link? No, because that's what happened last time. So I only had myself to blame. This time, it just got hacked out of nowhere. They changed the email address. So I can't... I don't get how Twitter allows you to do that. It's like, okay, random email address <laughs> change. And then signing my email out. Um, so yeah, wait, that, would you know the email thing. address? Do you know the email address that it's, it changed? No, to? I just see, I just see the first two letters. So it's like, it's, it's S E it's not my email address. So yeah. And of course it, you never know when the Twitter team will finally get back to you. I did a ticket obviously, but like, who <laughs> knows how long it'll be. I just keep, I'm like, uh -huh. Oh my God, are they going to start like retweeting crypto stuff and turn it into a crypto account? I don't know. Or an OnlyFans account. I don't know. So Wait, has, has so nobody's reached out to you for a ransom for the Twitter account? Yet, no. Right? And that's what happened last time. I checked my WhatsApp. I was like, where's the ransom? I'll pay it. I don't care. <laughs> Just give my Twitter account back. But no, no ransom. I don't know what they want from me. I don't know. Um, well, you know, it yeah, could I'm be old. Elon. You've been vocal against Elon Musk. It could be, it could be what, Elon. That's what else I was thinking about. That maybe Elon is like doing this to people that are anti-Elon. I don't know. And I also, my voice is more annoying than usual. I'm sorry, everyone who hates my voice. Um, oh my I, have a I don't, I don't right hate now. your voice. I, I, I don't hate Thank your voice you. at all. So F everybody that F is, says anything like that. <laughs> I'm just excited no, to have I you here, funny. period. I've gotten plenty of compliments about my voice also. And then you have the haters. They just don't <laughs> see the vision with my voice, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I have a really bad cold. My sinuses, I'm like so stuffed up. And so I'm sorry that I sound so nasally. I also am home right now. There was a little- You sound like Erica Jane. Room. You sound like Erica Jane, by the way. You're like- And oh, I'm saying Tom- account. I'm, I'm like, Tom House was broken into, <laughs> and he confronted the burglar, and, you know, my grandpa actually was sick. He's better now, thankfully, knock on wood. So, my Papa Tootie, shout out Papa Tootie, love you so much. He's such a fighter. PT! PT, baby, PT! PT! So, yeah, uh, that's, that's why I'm home right now, and I missed the Roni premiere. I I know that you, you dude, know, it, uh, dude, it was. It was insane. So, guys, realize what the New York premieres tonight or Sunday night. You'll listen to this on Monday. So, I'll recap it uh, uh, this week on probably on Tuesday. I have not seen the premiere episode, but the premiere party itself was insane. And I just, I have such an issue with sweat, anyways. I was so nervous. I get so nervous going to these things. And then Tracy Morrissey was, I finally met Tracy in person for the first time. She gave me like an edible. Then I was like getting free drinks. And I just, I, I'm like Kyle, Kyle Richards, by the way, made a post celebrating one year being alcohol free, which I think is such an, uh, an, an amazing accomplishment. And she was saying, I, I didn't drink every day, but when I did, I overdid it. And I was like, dude, I could potentially see myself, uh, being inspired by Kyle Richards because I get so nervous that I'll just drink anything in my path to make myself less nervous, which is such a, I mean, guys, I realize how dark that sounds, but I get so nervous going to these things and talking to people and and it, it turned and out it's great like an open bar it's an open oh bar. my god it was at the top of the rainbow room it was so beautiful like fucking tony danza che diaz's dad and 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 just like that was right behind me the whole time i'm like talking to people that i you know had only known online it was such a really cool night but then then the night of course 
Then we went to the Regency where, you know, it's not about Tom and, and Harry Dubin hang out. And I downed like two martinis there. And then we, we were going to go see a, a set at the Comedy Cellar, David Tell. And that was when I was like, oh, sh I've got the spins already. I'm going to I'm lit. There was an article the next day that this new ca uh, cast member, I think Jessa, uh, got food poisoning or threw up all over at the rainbow room. Uh, she's like an actual housewife. And I was like, can I blame this on food poisoning? Like I, I was so sick the next day. I could, didn't, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't move. It was horrendous. Uh, it was so, I would have been was so right fun in the moment. You. It was, yeah, it was so fun in the moment. I was, I was on cloud nine and, uh, but also Tracy Morrissey, um, God bless her. She was like, wow, you're still sweating. Like I was sweat. I was an hour and a half into the party and I was still couldn't calm down. And oh, I wanted you to should you get this. like a portable fan. I that's what I I was I saw some kid on the street with one of these things that hung around his neck and there was two fans blowing up. And I was like, would that be you need that. Yeah, like I was like, walking around the Roni premiere with that. <laughs> Oh, dude. Well, then, and then Tracy was like, take off your jacket. I was like, no, I can't. It's all sweat under here. It'll be even more noticeable. Anywho, I did get, wait, so I had a brief conversation with Andy about the Grateful Dead and John. Oh, I'm so jealous. I'm so upset that I couldn't be there he, with you. Uh, and I need to make it known that I was going to go with Ryan because I feel really cool. Yeah, everyone, just so you know, I was supposed to be there. So... Hey, I, hey, listen, uh, next time, bigger, bigger and better. Like, ho hopefully they'll keep doing things like this. I, you know, like I, I wanted to, I want to get Meditza there. I want to get my, I, like I, these things, I just get so nervous. I need somebody there. And it's like actually really fun when you get there. Um, Andy though, I, he was like, I, he was getting bombarded, but then I brought up Grateful Dead and he actually got really excited about that. It was the right thing to bring up. And he was like, no way. Oh my God. Da, da, da. And he's actually at the last Dead and Company shows this weekend. He flew to San Francisco to do that. Does he like know who you are? Because I feel like he should. I don't think he knew who I was in that moment, but I will say I'll tag him in certain things that are jokes. And I see that he sees them, but he never hearts them. So I think... I'm kind of one of those jag offs that make fun of Bravo, which is totally, you know, it's, you know, it's fine. But like, I, I guess the goal for the next year is to be more respected within the community. Is that's the, that's the, that's the goal. Okay. So you're, you're going to be moderating Bravo con this time. Yeah, next year for... That's, that's, that that's the dream. Which, Are by you the way, going to Bravo con by the way? Hell yes. You said you were going to go too. You said you were going to go. I know. I know. I need oh my God. to, I need to finally, I need to finally go. I'm a little nervous about like how overwhelming I feel like it must be. Well, wait, Sophie, how overwhelming is it to be in your city every day? It is like sensory overload. I'm so used to just like staying in my work spot, uh, either in Los Angeles or Arizona and just doing that and not going out. Like you, you hit the street and you see a million people immediately. Like it was, it, it is such sensory overload every day in New York. I don't know how you do it. So I don't think Vegas is going to be that big of a difference, except that you'll be excited to be around people that all kind of dig the same thing you dig. You're right. You're right. And it does sound so fun, and I am free that weekend. So, like, maybe I should go. just do it. Yes, I think I you know. Were, this is, babe, I know. You said you were doing it. This is ridiculous. By the way, I tickets know. go on sale. I'm sorry, this I'm backtracking. I'm sorry, I'm backtracking. I just, I feel like the enclosed space part of it all. Like, New York, like, the, the streets of New York, you're not enclosed with everyone. I think I'm just a little nervous about, like, being in an enclosed. What if it's Astro World? Which... <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, they had a, a, a the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills panel in New York last year. There was a stamp. There was almost a stampede. There was imagine a stampede. Yeah. Imagine losing your life at a below deck talk back. Like um, imagine what that, that like would happen to me. Demonstration. I, oh, that, you? that is the kind that would happen to me of all people. Well, so this Friday tickets go on sale. You guys there, they did away with the third level. So there's just general admission and VIP, but I will say like everybody immediately there's sticker shock. Of course, I love music festivals. So to me, this is like a music festival and I'm telling you, you're going to say, Oh, that sucks. I don't want to go, but you're going to want to be there. Like truly it was one of those things that I would love to shit on, but I had the best time. Me and Meditza went last year. I mean, there were, tr there were problems, you know, the equipment thing that got ta stolen and all that stuff, but so many great memories. And I got to meet so many cool people. I'm telling you, you would love it. You, I, I period you're going. Um, 
Okay, Wait, whatever so, uh, happened? Whatever happened with? Did you ever find your your stuff that was stolen at BravoCon last year? There oh is God. an interview, guys. There is a there is a recorder with an interview of me and Teresa Giudici out there, just laying there. There is an interview, and there's like my wallet with all like my IDs and stuff like that. And there was oh like God. charger. There was like a really nice microphone in there. So that's all out there. There's a lost interview between me and Teresa. Uh, which I just, I find it hysterical that I do not have that interview. So yeah, th but and it's but just like out there somewhere. Yeah. Oh, oh so I'll God. be back. I mean, I'm not allowed to say what, but I'll be back at the end of August uh, for a couple of weeks. Uh, if everything works out, if everything works out with, with family, my mom and stuff like that. So that's the goal right now, but I'll keep you guys posted. And Sophie, I'll let you know offline what's going on, but um, yeah. So this has been a big week for pop culture. I guess let's just start and get this out of the way because uh, I wanted to say a little piece of information. There is a lot of Raquel Rachel information going on right now because they're filming season 11 and she hasn't officially signed on yet. And then TMZ keeps doing these push alerts and they most recently said yesterday or two days ago that she is still under contract. And I just said like, guys, we can't keep like, I, you know, I don't care at the end of the day if she comes back or not, but these things of like people saying she signed, she didn't sign, the rumor mill is fully ablaze. I will say I posted that and then I did get word from a very close source that I'm not allowed to say that this is true. Her option, there is an option on Rachel Raquel for the 11th season and there was. I mean, they, it doesn't mean they're going to enforce it, but there is a contract in place that was already signed pre scandal So in a sense, Wait, what do you that, mean you know, a rule? What do you mean a rule? What, what did I say? What was the? What, can you? I thought it, you in said the there was a, a rule. There was a rule in place for Raquel. Oh, there was a. Uh, there was already a contract in place for Raquel. There was a. There was oh, a, I thought you a said contract. a rule, and I was like, "What's the rule?" The rule is do not. Yeah, no, I don't know. No, but she already is signed on, but she just signed on years ago because they'll sign you to multi-year contracts. So she can still renegotiate. She could still not show up. And I don't think they would do anything about it. But I guess this piece of the TMZ article was true. Um, and did you see that picture of Tom and Tom? They're already back to being best buds. Like, I swear there's going to be three episodes of Schwartz giving Sandoval a hard time. And then they're going to be like, you know, making out again. Like it's just, nothing's going to change. Oh my God. What about that Demois sighting of Lisa Vanderpump and Sandoval apparently getting into it? I don't know if I believe it. See, I don't believe that at all. So what she's referring to you guys, if you didn't see it, is that there was a Demois blind saying that Sandoval and Lisa had to be separated at Tom Tom because they were in a fight. And Lisa was like saying things like you're a betrayer and a liar and all of these things, which is like, Part of me finds it hard to believe that Lisa's so middle of the road that she's like, oh, yeah. you're a liar, Tom Sandoval. You're a meanie. I can't believe Nick Lane. I don't believe it at all. But I think it's one of those things that keeps people like literally any of us could ride in a blind to Demois. I just don't believe that. I feel like we would have gotten footage of that since they've filmed every other fucking thing and put it online so far. Right, right. Yeah, I don't know. I just, again, I can't picture Lisa Vanderpump, like, losing her cool. She I guess he can lose very... in his cool. Yeah. Oh, no, he'll smoke you're, out! You're, yeah, you're a lawyer and a cheat, and I, I don't want to be in a jacuzzi with you ever. Wait, I have a question about I'll knock, I'll knock you spark out. Was he saying I'll knock you spark out, like, I'll knock you right out? Or was he saying I'll knock your spark out, like, I'll knock your... Uh I believe because this is, she's referring to the episode with DJ James Kennedy when he was like, Lisa, don't fire me. And he was drunk and Ken finally got involved. And he was like, I'll knock your spark clean out. Like I thought he was saying yeah. like, I'll not, you're the spark and I'll knock your spark right out of your body. I'll, I'll, I'll send your soul to heaven, you know? Okay. Okay. Right. That's, you know, I go back and forth with it, but that's the most, you know, likely well, what reading of it. <laughs> What did you think of Vanderpump Rules being nominated for two Emmys? They, they isn't that two crazy? Emmys this season? I mean, it's, it's so crazy, funny. but I, I, I mean, yeah, they deserve it. But it's just so funny that like for so long we were like, oh my god, Vanderpump Rules editors deserve an Emmy, and like we weren't being serious, but 
turns out it was like a real possibility (laughs) sophie i hate to break the i was serious i was i was deathly serious i was like i've never no listen serious they got they got one for reality uh, programming, but they also got one, like you said, for editing. And it was that episode where Ken did the jacuzzi line, and they kept going back and forth. It was such so. Listen, it's another thing that I'm like. If they win, do the producers get to accept that Emmy? Does Lisa? Go, does the whole cast? Does Sandoval get on stage at the but, Emmys? But you know what. I don't, unfortunately, I don't think that it'll be, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think it'll be part of like the televised part because there are so many Emmys and then they have the other categories that, you know, they, they award them before the real ceremony. So like, yeah. will they actually be going on stage to accept her Vanderpump rules? I imagine that they'll have, you know, a good chunk of the cast members there. Definitely Ariana, but like, who else do you think they're all going to get to go to the Emmys? Oh, you know, fucking Sheena's gonna be a seat filler if she has to. She will oh, be at those Emmys. Yeah. They yeah. well, I would okay if, if they do present that on the actual broadcast. That means Vanderpump Rules won because Vanderpump Rules got such great ratings and it was really yeah. kind of universally talked about that. I would imagine they would want that on the prime. Wait, the prime I did special. see. Speaking of Vanderpump ratings, I did see recently about how Vanderpump Rules had the number one like rated in terms of rating show on cable like at one point yeah is that yeah. insane it's a, it, but like, more, more than, than succession like or, yes yeah. i mean well, that's what no, that succession does does succession count i don't know if succession counts because that i'm that's like a streaming or like a, yeah. a premium channel you know a premium cable. i think this is just cable i don't know cable. i don't know you guys but, well, but yeah, that's what it, I'm saying. Really... it was lightning in a bottle. It was lightning in a bottle. They'll not be able to replicate it, but yeah. I'm glad that they could potentially get some shiny baubles to celebrate what they did because it really, once the, this got found out, I got to say production handled this really brilliantly. And that last episode of Scandaball was really well done. Like it just, it, I mean, I, I just hate people still arguing about the fact of like, Oh, everybody's cheated. Da, da, da. I'm like, guys, this was just done. It was a really good series season of reality television. And I just am not here to shit on that at all. You know, I'll, I'm yeah. here to shit on Sandoval and other people, but like, I think what they did was they handled it in the correct way. And that's why I'm curious what you think of uh, moving to like Kyle and Mauricio. We did get the announcement <laughs> this week that their cameras are picking back up and it's the same production company evolution. Will this be even in the ballpark? This couldn't even be in the ballpark of Scandal. No. No, I also think that Kyle, like my conspiracy theory is that Kyle is doing all of this just to compete with Lisa Vanderpump because she is seeing Lisa Vanderpump winning and she can't have that. <laughs> yeah, that and I, listen, if it was I, that, I would love if that was true. That would be, I would be there for that so much. And but like, I don't, she I, would, she would do that. And it's like, why else? With these, they came out and denied the rumors. Or, like, it wasn't even, like, a rumor. It was, like, People Magazine kind of confirming that Kyle and Mauricio were separating them. They were, like, we're not, actually. And it's, like, what are you doing this just to, like, fuck with us? No, so if you read those Instagram things, they said, we are not divorcing. Has it been a horrible summer? Yes. But they didn't flat out say we are not separating. So, also, if it gets to People Magazine and the author of the byline of that was Dave Quinn, those things are exclusives. Those things are, you get permission. It's like Lindsay and Carl's engagement. Though There is a structure in place when it gets to People Magazine. It's not the Washington Post, but it's still so much different than Daily Mail, TMZ, all of those things. So, there was a complete source that like checked off on that article. So I think it's one of those things to cushion the blow. They do have a family, you know, they've invested in so many fancy hats together. Like, you know, like mm-hmm. they're, 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 they're a fan, but, but by the way, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you see that Sophie's name is Mauricio's revenge body. And that is true. Kyle celebrated one year of sobriety. Mauricio celebrated six abs on that thirst trap that he posted he's, he's, post, he's posting thirst traps what did you think of mauricio's thirst trap oh i mean he's you a liked it oh. he's a tall drink of water i'll say that i much. like i liked um mauricio i liked heavier mauricio because he said he goes he goes face it guys i was fat four years ago yeah he was like i was fat around. 
Yeah, and I and you and you slide the slideshow, and it's like you were he wasn't fat. I no. thought he looked good in both. He looks good in both, but he's obviously you know really been spending a lot of time in that gym. So good I wonder if he's like listen. He's just listening to Melissa Etheridge on repeat. He's just like must get Kyle back. Must get no. I don't. Uh-huh. Know Mauricio. I don't. I I think Mauricio is probably. I think they're probably in a better place with this quote unquote separation than any of us would give them credit for. And I think Mauricio after 27 years, I I don't know. I think Mauricio is probably at this moment invigorated by potentially being able to speak to other women. You know what I'm saying? For sure. I mean, he already has been, but now it's like, think about the top, sugar daddy on the market right now potential sugar daddy (laughs) like the fact that he is actually hot and extremely wealthy i mean the world is his oyster including me like i'm an option oh your dude has to worry i thought it was joe burrow the quarterback only now you've moved it to mauricio as well you have a roster? You have a roster of like, wait, what are those called? The top five, like, or your, what is it called when you have a, with your partner? Oh, uh, your hall pass, hall pass. Hall pass. Yes. Yeah, so you have hall two pass. hall passes, Mauricio and Joe Burrow. And Timothy Chalamet. Oh God. That see, that's like, dude, he's like third. The, the guy doesn't even have a pubic hair. Timothy Chalamet. That guy is like, no, he is a little boy. Like that is a li- with ma- imagining him and Kylie Jenner together cracks me up. Cause you know, just like, he's like, she's like a normal average girl, but he's like half the size of Kylie Jenner. I know. That's why I'm like, no, no. So I still don't believe that was ever a thing. Don't believe it. Don't buy it. Which by the way, but we yeah, say I that guess, and then I guess you could say, I guess you could say that's that's a hall pass for me. So Mauricio, Mauricio. if you're listening, brother, like, hook, well, Mauricio is that kind of guy. I was saying this, that like, even when they had cheating rumors about him for years and years, he was that kind, he was so well liked that nobody really truly gave a shit. And one of the rumors I read on Reddit that was from like a lady, they said how caring and loving he was on their the night that, of passion that they had. And I was like, that says something for a guy to cheat and the lady to write a glowing Yelp review about the experience. Oh my God, uh, Mauricio. Yeah, I mean, he's already been out there, putting himself out there. I allegedly, potentially. Allegedly, allegedly. Do you think so. PK will go out like on the prowl with Mauricio? Ew. No, I'll, 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 be I'll be your wingman. I'll be your wingman, Mauricio. So cramp his style. He would so cramp his style. So I hope <laughs> not, but probably. I know those are the disgusting brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Wait! Oh my God! You've got to! You've got to thread that. You've got to. Tw- uh, once you get your Twitter account back, that's I a know. Good tweet. Um. Damn it! Damn it! Okay, I'm writing it down. Which by, uh, uh, oh, by the way, that's what I, I hate to keep bringing this up. And I got a lot of negative feedback about this comment. I said last Monday that this is one of the only times that I, I almost said that I wish Rena was back because she would get to the bottom of this. And I got so much hate responses about that comment, but you guys, I don't like Lisa Rena, but you know, she would be so annoying that she would actually bring into light whatever actually is going on. Does that make sense? Or am I completely off base for saying you, that? you think Rena would you think Reno would do that for to Kyle and Mauricio? Absolutely not. I'm going to disagree with you there. You don't think she would betray who- Kyle. You don't, you don't think she would betray Kyle. No, and be like, not at all. What are you doing with Morgan? What are you? Who's Morgan? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to agree with the people that were cyberbullying you because you hear that mom. I think 1000%. I, <laughs> I think 1000%. Rinna has always been in an alliance with Kyle and with Erica for the most part. Um, so yeah, I don't see her betraying Kyle. I really don't. I just can't picture it because who would she have on her side? No one else likes her or trusts her. Well, who no, would she I have like if she, she did pops- that? Well, I just, I think she's a grenade and she just comes in and realizes she's going to like just be s- destructive completely and like pulled it. And I feel like Erica would be on her side with that, which by the way, I just saw a photo. Erica was meeting with a couple of the Kimberly Archie and one of the other victims of Tom Girardi, like, 
Erica Jane met up with two of the victims and I'm not sure what that's all about, but I was like, did Erica Jane meet with the victims to see if she can get some money? Like, I mean, what was that? Yeah, like, I'm shocked what? that Erica Jane would do that. Like, and you guys have any money? Me too. Yeah. It, wild. Me um, too. That's surprising. I but, wonder if she's doing is, is Beverly Hills still? No. Oh, they picked the cameras back up. Maybe she's doing it for the cameras. Oh my God. That's you, you're right. You're probably right. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. They did pick up. So picking back up the cameras, I just don't think we're going to get the actual story. I don't think, um, I don't think, I don't think she's going to clarify what's going on with her and her new friend. I don't know if that's a relationship or not. I've seen a lot of back and forths on that, but w I guess we'll see. I just, Kyle's never been that forthcoming. So I think it's an, it's a non-starter. Like I think the Bravo audience is more fascinated with it right now, but I think the actuality of it, I don't know. Who knows? I could be completely wrong. Um, also, I wanted to read really quickly just for people that are curious. I am a proud member of the Screen Actors Guild, SAG-AFTRA. We are currently on the strike with the Writers Guild of America. And I do want to know, even though we do talk about movies and television, uh, we are allowed to do so. But I do want to make uh, you guys aware of a strike that is happening that I am fully behind for residuals artificial mm -hmm. intelligence usages. And uh, just for all mm -hmm. the people reaching out, this podcast is not affiliated with a uh, union. If I was on radio, it would be a different story. This is a podcast. And I am being encouraged by Screen Actors Guild to speak still about TV and movies. Uh, but I will be making announcements every day that I record about the strike. So I want to know this is out there and this, what we're asking for is not insane. We are, we are ruled by corporate overlords that you literally pay themselves $267 million a year. When I get maybe 15 cents from a Netflix show that I did two years ago, like it, it's really kind of a ridiculous thing. I could not make my living as an actor alone at all. Like period. I would never be able to make a living as an actor at this point. Um, and I barely could eke by when I was just being an actor. So, um, uh, there's a lot of people out there like me. This yeah. is going to affect a lot of livelihoods, but I just wanted to let you guys know for everybody uh, messaging me, I am allowed to do this. I am encouraged to do this actually. And we will continue to talk about the strike. Um, do you have any opinions on the strike, Sophie? I know you're not a member oh of the God. unions, but you support unions. Yeah, of course. I, I'm so proud of everyone that has, you know, been literally on the picket lines. And I just think that it's so crazy how I've been I've been reading all about it there was an article about I don't know if you saw it and I think it was the New Yorker about how orange is the new black this mega popular it really put Netflix on the map and those actors it was interviewing you know some of these actors that were on the show that were so popular and recognizable and one of the most popular shows of the decade that made nothing from it they still had to work their day jobs like it's just so crazy and I think and what I've been reading is that Netflix really has backed themselves into a corner because they, if they say they literally can't afford to pay these actors and writers, they are signaling to their investors that this business model, our company isn't as profitable as we make it seem like Apple TV. They have the money. It's Apple, Amazon. They have the money. Netflix really doesn't have another, you know, stream of revenue other than their streaming subscriptions. And I, I don't know, I'm fascinated by it because it really is showing that streaming isn't as profitable as they have made it seem. And no. yeah, of I mean, course, they, the they, they don't writer them. deserve to be, yeah, they deserve to be compensated for their work. And compared to the residuals that network TV actors, you know, get from syndication and all of that in reruns, whatever it is, it, it's just mind boggling. I mean, it, 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 like, yeah, it's just, yeah. It, it really is. It, it, it's very shocking when you get down to the actual numbers of it. And I think people have the false uh, perception that if you are on TV or movies, you're automatically rich. And that is just not the case. Sometimes mm -hmm. the things, same things happen with Bravo of like, Oh, if you're on Vanderpump rules, you're rich. It's like, no, some of those cast members are getting $5,000 a season. If you're a first year cast member, cause they say you'll make all that money on the back end through Instagram deals and stuff like that. But like, when I say like, I did a couple episodes of the office NBC. Now NBC had a great residual plan in place through the union where when I did those, I got really great residuals from that. Could I make a living of just like a couple episodes of The Office? Hell no. But it was like a nice surprise every time you get a check. Once mm -hmm. Office was sold to Netflix, those residuals dry up. 
the residual deal mm-hmm. in place, you would get, I mean, I'd get checks. I still get checks for like three cents, four. I'm not joking. Three cents, four cents, 10 cents. That's and it's so insulting. It's so insulting. Like if you're sending a check for three cents, you might as well just not send anything like, Oh, I mean, you, it's, you know? it's more for the, it's more for the postage. It's, it's, we, it's so, and it's so demoralizing because being an actor is like a lottery regardless, but then you open the mailbox, you get a couple checks from SAG and you're excited, but it's a lottery. You don't know what you're going to get. And then you open three checks in a row for like under 10 cents each. And it really is that depressing thought of, Oh my God, I just remember having that thought so many times of, I totally did pick the wrong career. Like this is like, Oh my God, what, what did I do? What did I do? And this is like, we had a writer's guild person on here a couple months ago. They've been striking for months and Netflix especially has been really hard nosed with this, where there was a producer or one of the AMPTP had a, a quote in Hollywood reporter saying their strategy is to wait us out to wait till we start losing our homes or apartments when we're not going to be able to afford things. <laughs> so and disgusting. that's really, they went on record. Uh, I mean, they didn't put the person who said it, but that was their strategy of to wait till we really start suffering. And Netflix, especially, especially with the Writers Guild, they're like, fuck them, fuck them. And their thing is artificial intelligence is such a powerful tool. And oh they know God. it is. They, but they know it is. And they're acting like they don't really understand algorithms, blah, blah, blah. And at the end of the day, they do know how powerful it is. They, what they're trying to do, you guys, you know, extras and like scenes of like crowds and stuff like that. Those are actual people that get paid. Usually they're non-union extras, 60, 70 bucks a day. You have SAG extras, SAG extras that get way more, but what they want to do is scan your body image. They'll give you a one day rate for scanning your body image. And then they can use your body image in TV and movies until the end of time for one day. And you and make, yeah, pay. for one day's pay, you make no residuals from that ever again. It's wild. Like, it's really, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. scary. It's crazy. And you think about how much these execs make, the Disney CEO, like, it's Bob so, Iger and... Yeah, so Bob Iger makes, I think, I was reading that he makes like 75K a day. And yeah. the yeah, average yeah. salary of the average SAG member is like $67,000 a year. So it's like guys, guys uh, that, that wait, wait, so that I that's not even the average. I'm sorry, average is more like thirty thousand. I used to be able to get he- health mm-hmm. insurance from SAG, and I remember this my first year of SAG, all I had to make was fifteen thousand dollars, and I got really premium health care. And now, you know, I could not make my SAG minimum to get health care through SAG anymore. And what they offer is so different from when I started. It really is so scary. Like my friend that has been a working actor for twenty years. This was his first year. He didn't get uh, SAG health insurance, and he has two kids. One's a baby. He was, you know, panicking. So, and I just need, I, I just need a day of work somewhere. Like, and guys, this is, uh, this is not just actors and blah blah blah. This is the country as a whole. You know, a lot of us are going through times like this, obviously. But that's why it's important that we stand up in times like this, and we love these things so much, and they're really worth fighting for entertainment is worth fighting for. So mm-hmm. we'll talk more about that. I'm going to have a SAG rep on and and a, and a Writers Guild rep on. Um, over the next coming weeks. So we'll answer a lot of your questions then. But speaking of that, um, Oppenheimer had one of its premieres this week and the actors, uh, Cillian Murphy, Robert Downey Jr. And Emily Blunt. Matt it's Damon. Killian. Apparently Killian, it's sorry. Killian. Killian. Yeah. Killian Murphy. I just recently found out that it's pronounced I, Killian. I would never have known that. And I've known that. I, I feel like I've, but they walked off the red carpet because you're not allowed to promote movies as a Screen Actors Guild member. So that's why they did the Barbie premiere mm-hmm. early last Sunday. So uh, you're not going to see these big press junkets with actors anymore. So mm-hmm. dig in, um, which, by the way, we are now at the week of Barbenheimer. Barbie and Oppenheimer comes out on Friday. What is your plan of action for these? I'm so show? excited. I haven't like pre bought tickets or anything i think i'm gonna wait until like after the first few days so i'm not like in a super crowd here i go with like the crowds again apparently all of a sudden i can't be around crowds um so yeah but i'm very excited to see both of them my boyfriend even wants to see both of them um barbie looks hilarious yeah like it really like all the clips that keep i feel like just like you know every few days a new clip drops on twitter and like it's so freaking funny looking i can't wait i'm so excited what do you but what do you see for, if you see it the first day what do you see first like do you see oppenheimer first and then go to the hystericalness of barbie or do you see barbie first because it puts you in a good mood and then get completely depressed about oppenheimer and the making of the atomic bomb you know what if i were to do that i probably would do barbie last as a palate cleanser but i just 
I don't think I can be. I feel like I used to be one of those people that could see multiple movies in a day. I feel like, and I did that once. I did that once with The Help when it came out, and then one day with Anne Hathaway. They were like out at the same time. Anyway, <laughs> I don't think I don't think I can do that because. I feel like I don't have like the attention span anymore to like sit in the theater for that long or like I'll get antsy and like, I don't know. I don't think I can do the, do the double feature day that a lot of people are doing. I respect it and I fully support it. I just don't think personally I can sit in a theater for that long. It might trigger some sort of psychosis too, because Oppenheimer has like extreme black and white imagery. And then you have the color palette of Barbie, you know, like it's like, I mean, really, it could really mess us up as a, I mean, have a plan in place though. Like this is exactly, yeah, have I a think plan in should, place. If you're also one of those people that likes to see movies high, I probably wouldn't get high before <laughs> Oppenheimer. You can take like a smoke break in between Oppenheimer and Barbie. That's what I would do. God. Jeez. Uh, but I'm excited. It's excited to be like actually be excited about the movies. We had Mission Impossible 7 come out this weekend, uh, which, by the way, I guess didn't do as good as they were projecting. It only made like 75 million over a five day weekend. And uh, this Tom Cruise, I'm worried about him with the strike more than anybody because it seems like he depends on movies so much. Like he, he, it seems like movies are all he has potentially. He needs, he can't have this business shutting down. Did you see that video of him? like eating popcorn he was like mm, yeah popcorn and i'm like you're a weird alien he goes he goes he goes that's all i need movies and my popcorn and it it looked like, like a man that had never that? and he goes it looked like a man who had never eaten popcorn in his life he was like good old sweet sweet aroma cr popcorn like it looked like he had no idea what he was touching he was like me and this popcorn and the pot it just it looked like a big bag of prop popcorn that Tom Cruise was pretending to enjoy. And it was He's Nicole, like, you, mm, crunchy foam nut. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know Nicole Kidman knows her way around some popcorn. She knows Hell what the yeah. taste of popcorn is like. Our, our um, AMC queen, of course. Yeah. Um, also. Uh, Wait, your sound went out. You mute, you're muted. Okay, one sec, you guys. One, da, 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 da. Sorry, oh, one sec. Your... Yeah, one sec. It like took okay. off your your. Yeah. One sec. This is fun. We were also I happy. I when it that... disconnects my chat. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're back. Thirty-seven oh six. Um. Can you hear me? We're back, baby. Yep. Uh, where was I going to go from? Oh, okay. Tom, Tom Cruise. Oh, Jane Birkin passed away at the age of 76 after a long battle with cancer. Fuck cancer. She, of course, was known uh, mm -hmm. for the bag, even though she has a long, amazing history. But it just reminded me of, I posted this today, of that Drake story that Drake has a wall of Birkin mm -hmm. bags in Toronto mansion. Uh, that he bought for his future wife. Why is Drake so corny? I know he just is. It's just who he is. It's in his blood. He's just the corniest person alive. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's a great, a great gift for your future wife, a wall of Birkins. Yeah. Maybe I should add him to the hall pass list just for the Birkins. And then I would break his heart and run away. Get like a wall of like Ross Ross dress for lesses purses. Like, do they have like, like of all my hall passes? I feel like of all my hall passes, Drake is the one who I could probably break his heart because he's so sensitive and corny. Like the rest of them wouldn't <laughs> actually care about me, but he he probably would. Um, no, I just. But by yeah, the way, Jane Jane Birkin, rest in peace. Jane Jane Birkin, yeah, rest in peace, Jane Birkin. She was a fashion a icon. Mean. I mean, no, a beautiful woman, uh, obviously left like a huge mark on culture. Uh, but I was looking at a sex in the city meme about Birkins. And then that led me to 
Did you keep up with and just like that over the last couple of episodes? Yes. Yes. Che. Oh my God. I actually felt bad for Che at the end of the, the episode, which I never thought I would, but I, because really... of the focus, they had a focus group where people yeah. talked about their feelings about Che Diaz. And the writer said, this was like a wink to all of us who have been shit talking Che Diaz, but I stand by shit talking Che Diaz. I need more of Miranda's story. I don't give a fucking rip about Che Diaz. I'm sorry. That's I do not. So, I'm not a chase sympathizer. It's so funny that that you know they're making it seem like Che all of a sudden has this like dad joke, millennial cringe, horrible humor. But then, how did Che become so famous in the first place? Like, yeah. Well, it's, oh well, my god. There's a lot of steps that, and just like that, leave out, and it's just, and it, mm. but it is hysterical. Like this episode wasn't as bad as the week before when Harry had dry balls; he couldn't do anything with his ball. You know, like his balls, like Harry oh. had a ball thing, and then you had the Che Diaz Miranda um, threesome potentially with her ex, with their ex husband, which was I think Che Diaz. By the way, Che Diaz and Tom Sandoval are very much alike. I believe Che Diaz is fully cheating on Miranda. I don't trust Che Diaz as far as I could throw them, period. Oh, that's an interesting I theory. Don't. I also like seeing, what's his name, Peter Herman? Who's Is that Peter? the actor's name? Peter, the, or am the, I thinking of his name from, yeah, Peter Herman, the, the actor who played um, George, who ran into Carrie on his bike. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so a Mariska Hargitay's husband. He also was in oh. Younger, a show that I dearly miss. One of my like favorite shows. Um, so yeah, that was a great surprise. I actually really enjoyed this episode. I thought Harry dressing as the Americans to go to Rock's photo shoot was like so funny. Um, he looked. Wait, yeah. he looked like Lisa Rinna. He looked like Lisa Rinna. He didn't look like the Americans. He looked like Lisa really? Rinna in those like glasses know, like, and the what? long hair. It was the wig but choice. <laughs> I but didn't. I, yeah. I want Charlotte to stop saying rock in every sentence. You're gonna upset rock. I just I oh I just God. I'm still there's so many things about it just like that. It is so watchable. And this episode, you're right, was better than the last week's episode, but I just can't, I don't know. It is just so ridiculous, but I look forward to it every week. Same. Another sh another show that you're gonna fight me on, and I know you're not probably keeping up with, but I and I I am so enjoying this show this season is keeping up with the, the, the Kardashians. I'm sorry. Oh. It is so flipping ridiculous. They fought over Andrea Bocelli last episode. This episode, they're doing a Christmas album. And then Kim calls Babyface behind Courtney's back. And then they're like, that's all like fake bullshit. But then there are these things, Sophie, like Scott comes in and he's wearing like um, uh, uh, double Jewish uh, star necklaces. Star of uh -huh. David necklaces. And he's like, somebody's got to rep represent the Jews, which was a little slight at Kanye. And I fucking yep. loved it. I and love it that the, about Scott. Good good for Scott. I love that. Yes. About him. Like it puts in those, because you have to take in, not that the show itself is like whatever, but then if you take in, like look at the context of their actual lives, those little things, you know, Scott's poking the bear. You know, Scott is, it's completely ridiculous. You realize these people are billionaires and they're all agoraphobic for the most part. Chloe can't even leave her house. Next week's Kristen's coming back. It's a mess. But if you watch it in this interesting, kind of way, no, it's so interesting. So they literally fought over weddings. I've actually picked up a new show. And when you said that you've been enjoying the show this season, I like for a second thought you were going to say this show because you said Kardashians claim to fame you guys so that clip that went around oh Twitter tom hanks's tom, tom hanks's niece i was like okay i'm very i i think i had like heard of the show in passing but i never really paid attention to it i was like i need to check out this show so i watched that episode and i was like holy shit i'm obsessed with the show i binge watched me and my boyfriend he had the stomach flu last weekend so i was sleeping on the pullout couch i was in the on the pullout couch all day last Sunday, watching Claim to Fame season one, binged it, Claim to Fame season two, there have been three episodes so far, and I'm caught up on that. It's so good, you guys. It's so, so explain the concept. Better. Explain the concept so, to the okay, people. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. I need to back up because I know I'm not explaining the concept. Okay, so Claim to Fame is a reality show on ABC. It's all of these people that are related to celebrities, whether it's uh, Tom Hanks' niece, for instance, that's already spoiled from this like viral clip on Twitter because she freaks out when she got eliminated. And lots, I'm not going to like spoil it by saying like names, but A-list celebrities, they're 
sons, daughters, nieces, nephews, cousins, brothers, sisters. And um, basically the game is to try to keep, they're all trying to keep their identity hidden, but there are challenges where they like their clues. There's like, you know, secret hints and a clue wall and the challenges. If you lose a challenge, your clue could get revealed. So the challenge is to keep your identity a secret and then you guess someone else's identity to eliminate them. And the prize is $100,000. I'm not going to say who won last season, but someone very famous as relative won last season. Obviously, that's the concept <laughs> of the show. I was about to say who, but like, I don't want to spoil it. Everyone needs to watch it. It's so freaking good. It's on oh ABC, God. right? ABC? But also Hulu. So you can like binge watch okay. the first season on Hulu. I promise. It's like so much fun. I like got so into it. So thank yeah, you, you guys, to everyone Hanks who posted. Is... Tom oh, Hanks' Jonas niece lost. It. The Jonas okay, great. Because I, I have a Jonas Frankie brother story. Jonas and it's and uh, Frankie Jonas, the bonus Jonas, and Kevin Jonas. So that's fun, also. But yeah, Tom Hanks' niece flipped out. Because they guess, like, there's one clue and it says bench, and the guy guesses Tom Hanks because Forrest Gump was on a bench. And she was like, How dare you do bench? Of course you're going to fucking get it. And he's not even that smart. And she, like, goes on a rampage around the house and she just keeps. And I just felt like, Man, poor Tom Hanks just fucking gets, like, Tom Hanks is like, uh, it's just funny. You get the sense that everyone around Tom Hanks are just maniacal dicks. It's a nut job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was, it, she was like, I deserve more camera time. I didn't even oh, get God. to do any of the challenges. Anyway, <laughs> go watch it. Um, okay. So I did want to uh, like a more serious topic. And I think this is just at the height of bravery and for like secret sufferers out there. I think this is just so inspirational. Uh, this week, this blew me away. Joe Jonas confesses to uh, pooping his pants on stage this week, and it really, it really affected him. Did you, did you read about this, Josie? I mean, I, did you read I, about this, Sophie? Josie, I, I, Sophie, I Josie, I, I uh, who is Josie? Josie? I don't know. Oh my god, I'm yeah. like jealous. <laughs> um, I did see this and. You know what? He's not the first one to do it. Didn't Fergie do it first? Exactly. That's what I want to remind people. In 2005, street scene in San Diego, Fergie, when, you know, she was such a performer that she realized she was a little tipsy, had to pee, and then she couldn't stop the party and she peed her pants. And there's these great photos that you can find of Fergie with just completely soiled pants, you know, that I got a feeling that I'm going to pee my pants now. And it was truly <laughs> like, I mean, it's the height of professionalism, but Joe Jonas says for years, he has kept this secret, a gastrointestinal mishap yet on stage. He was uh, wearing white pants about four years ago in 2019. They had just announced that the Jonas brothers were getting back together after a six year hiatus. And he was on stage and he oops, I crapped my pants. And he said, let's just say it was a, a bad day to choose to wear white clothing. You think it might've been a little something else, a little something extra. So that's a story I've never told. And also that's just real life. And I'm saying that's the kind of bravery I want from my pop stars. Like that's the kind yeah. of, cause you yeah. know, they all have, you know, they've all pooped and peed. Like, have you ever wondered? Yeah. Yeah. They all poop and pee. They're just like us. Celebs. They're just Taylor like us. Taylor Swift you probably know? wears is a diaper. Every night. I wonder if she does actually when she's performing. Like, when do they go to the bathroom when they're performing for like hours? What are they supposed well, to she do? Does... I guess you have no choice sometimes. I bet it's gnarly. I bet she has like a pee bucket or something while they're changing her. She has a like. I bet it's no. Like, I bet it's gnarly because it's she like a three and a half hour a show. Well, yeah, dude, I, yeah. I have a nerve. I have a nervous tummy. Just like that's how I was born. Yeah, and like I could Same. like I. Well, that's the other thing. I was watching Broadway this week in New York and I was sweating everywhere. And my first thought is when these actors come out on stage, I'm like, I could never do Broadway. Like how I would just be sweating through the entire show. And then people would just be watching me sweat instead of like believing that I was this character. Is that narcissistic for me to think about when I was watching a Broadway show? No, I'm no. I mean, that's a totally fair thing to think about. I think also like I'm like you where I get a nervous tummy. I think a lot of people do. That's like a pretty normal thing. And I would just, before I went out on stage, if I had to perform in front of people, I would be like shitting 
nonstop. Yeah. I really would be. <laughs> yeah, like, because... I'm sorry to be so graphic, you guys, but like, there's like a period of time where you've got to make sure your stomach's okay before you can go out. Like, what if your stomach's not okay and it's like time to go on? That kind of added pressure to my stomach. Like IBS, like she, uh, what's her name? Kelsey, uh, Camille Grammer. She was a spokesperson for IBS back in the day. Kelsey Grammer encouraged her to do that. If you remember, I've went back and looked for uh, Camille Grammer IBS ads and I've only been able to find like a couple official ones, but like she has, she was like a spokesperson for uh, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, but it is just one of those things that like, how do these performers do it? They've got to, they've got to be so regimented. You can't party the night before. Cause you got to go out and do a show. Like, does this happen to Beyonce? Yeah. I mean, it, it has to happen to everyone. I'm sure. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Um, moving on to healthier topics. I didn't get to talk about this happened last week. And all I could think about was like, what does Sophie think about this? Can you guess what that was? Um, what happened last week? I don't remember. Jonah Hill. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, like how are you going to tell a professional surfer that she can't post photos in a bathing suit? Like, Come on. And I think I like that, that he was like, like we can't do surf culture things. We can't do surf yeah, things like, with each other if you continue this behavior. He's so weird and embarrassing. And also, I mean, it's been a long standing, you know, rumor that he's a huge asshole. So it doesn't surprise yeah. me all that much. What surprises me is that there's so much debate about these texts. And I think that it just shows that like abuse is a spectrum. It's very nuanced. It's not black and white, you know, like it's, I think that some of his behaviors was trying to, these aren't boundaries. This is controlling someone. You are threatening them with breaking up with them if they don't do what you say. And um, yeah, I just thought the texts were very disturbing. I think that Sarah, that's her name, right? Sarah. Yeah. So she she also like released some texts that I think were maybe like a little inappropriate to too release. Far. She released a sex, yeah, a sex of his, which I thought was a little too far. Well, and, like, I didn't, didn't see really that. I didn't see that. I did, I did not. Yeah, I did not see the like, sex. yeah, there were a lot of like she like kept going, and I'm like, okay, you're stop while you're ahead, because this quickly could go off the rails. And I think releasing a sex was like a little bit too far, but I don't want that to. And I, I really just don't want that to discredit what she did her post, that was story? very valid yeah the actual story which i think is very valid and worth you know listening to um so yeah i'm totally team sarah here i think that jonah i mean if you've heard rumors about him again he it's been you live in you live in old tinsel town isn't that the word on the guys street? you can't you can't go down a street without hearing a jonah hill story here it is non it's 24 no i mean listen i have heard tons of stories yeah. about him and it sucked because i think jonah Hill's very funny i started yeah. considering him a fashion icon um mm -hmm. you know him and seth rogan and listen i mean i i i made an Instagram about this is that whole team of Judd Apatow guys that he made movies all around. It's very interesting to see the James Franco where he is, you know, why these guys don't work together anymore. It is very interesting. Even uh, Jay uh, Baruchel, B-A-R-U-C-H-E-L. -E you would know him if yeah. you saw him. He's, but he's been in all those movies. He was on record a couple of years ago mm -hmm. saying like, yeah, me and Jonah did not get along famously. And that was mm -hmm. the relationship they had in the movie. This is the end where they played themselves. And I found, I find that behind the scenes stuff more fascinating than sometimes the movies that they actually make. And I would want to know more about that, but it seems like, and this is the other thing too, psychologically, you're thinking about it. This dude, when you change your appearance so much up and down, it is so, uh, it's so hard how you view yourself and how you think others view you. Like I, I've been a weight yo-yo or for all my life. And I will always see myself as a gigantic man. And that's how my, that's how I view the world through those eyes. So when anybody compliments me about looks or anything like that, I immediately discredit them and think they're insane. And that I know is my problem, but it's very real to me. And I was not, I'm not trying to give grace to Jonah, but I do imagine it sounds like this stuff has messed him up so much 
that he is like mm-hmm. taking out his therapy speak speak like therapy speech on other people instead of yeah. realizing we're all unique, you know, all unique snowflakes that all have our different uh-huh. things. Like his experience is not her experience. And for him to like use what's worked for him on her, it just, it's a, like a prison. It's a, it's a cage he's putting around her. Yeah. And I think that's a totally fair point to say, if you've struggled with weight issues, you always see yourself through that lens. And I think that he is clearly a deeply, deeply insecure person. And yeah. Yeah. And weaponizing the therapy speak like very icky, but seems, you know, on brand for him. He did make that. I never watched that. I'm proud. Yeah. It's called uh, Stutz, Stutz, I believe he, he did a documentary on Netflix that came out around the holidays about his therapist, which is kind of dark in its own right. I watched it. I liked it. Uh, It wasn't groundbreaking for me, but I liked it. I do like people that talk about therapy and I hate, I hate things like this because it gives a bad rep for therapy, but therapy is a very personal experience and what works for somebody does not work for everybody. And I just thought it was cool that he was shining a light on that shit. But when you see things like this, well, that was the thing I was going to ask you, have you, has this ever happened to you? Have you ever released X's text or has X's released your text? Have you ever gotten into an online uh, battle with any X's? You know what? I'm going to say I have not. I, I don't think I have, and I can't imagine doing that. What but would again, push you most to do of that? my ex, I, if I really had been dealing with a very famous, like, narcissistic, manipulative asshole ex boyfriend who the entire world adored, maybe I would, you know? But fortunately for me, though, that doesn't describe any of my ex boyfriends. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and, and your future boyfriends, uh, Drake and, uh, and, and, uh, Joe Burrow and, and the other one. Um, well, uh, so it just, I wanted to recommend something to everybody. I just watched, uh, there's a three part docu series on Hulu right now called, uh, betrayal betrayed or betrayal. And it just came out oh, this yeah. weekend. And it's this really fascinating story about a man that had this whole secret life and was cheating on multiple, multiple people. And they had did it like a pretty successful podcast about it and they transferred it over to a series, but I think it's worth a worth your watch. It really was like, but it was making me think of like Sandoval's and Jonah's. Cause mm-hmm. I was like, Oh, I wonder if, I wonder if, uh, if Rachel Raquel, she wants to be called Rachel. Now that she learned that in therapy, if she'll release eventually Sandoval's texts or if, you know, cause you have to imagine there mm-hmm. was a real, not, I mean, I believe Rachel was completely a part of all of this, but I do. I bet there's some real doozy texts in Rachel's phone right now. Oh where yeah, Tom was yeah. To keep everything, all the balls in the air at the same time. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, the betrayal actually was a podcast first. It's based on a podcast. Yes. And, and I listened to the podcast and yeah, it's a very disturbing story. Trigger warning for like grooming and, you know. Yeah. Because he was also a high school teacher. He he had, he had Mm -hmm. relations with high school students. I mean, he went to prison for this and they, I mean, he was the perfect boyfriend and husband. Mm -hmm. I mean, like these people work so hard. He kept all of this shit going and like, you just didn't know all the crap underneath that. It was really, really scary. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Real Housewives of Potomac really quick they filmed their finale for this upcoming season this weekend but this week there was a whole fight breakdown Uh, I don't know if you read about this about the the Potomac fight that happened this week after they after oh yeah with Sesame Street Sesame Street is back yeah, Sesame Street, uh, of course, Ashley's friend, um, Deborah, who was made into a meme because Deborah, by the way, thought Candace's husband, Chris, was like flirting with her. And then we saw the footage and it just was not the case at all. It was completely ridiculous. Well, Deborah is back and there has been this huge fight that went down and TMZ got footage. I mean, Candace, like, I love Candace. Candace didn't get into the fight, but she immediately grabbed a champagne bottle. Did you see her grab the bottle? And I was like, have, yes, we, learned nothing from the Monique fight? have we learned nothing from the Monique fight from years ago? Like, that's completely like, what wild. Was she, what was she planning with that champagne bottle? Like, I need to know. Yeah. <sighs> 
But what is your opinion on, I was reading a lot of discourse of like, well, this is so trashy. Like we want to enjoy these women, but it shouldn't be a cage match. And this was after cameras went down. Do you think, do you get excited when you see a fight like this? Or do you think, come on, this is fucking ridiculous. You're, you're, you're grown ladies. Why are we doing this? And it's always cast members that aren't full cast members. Like they're trying to make right. their name. Right. Like, are you just trying to get on the show at this point? I don't know, but I wouldn't, you know, people calling it trashy. It's like, I would call Jersey trashier than Potomac oh. for sure. Oh my so. God. Sophie, I Tuesday or Wednesday morning, I wake up, I check my Instagram and there's like a, uh, somebody liked to post with the verification. So, I, so my eye was immediately drawn to it. Fucking Louis Ruelas like randomly liked a post I did about Raquel from like saying Raquel is an off person or something like that. And he liked that from months ago in the middle of the night on now Tuesday night. Now he's going to see all the shit you post about him. Well, <laughs> Sophie, I did a pretty much identical post about Louis. So I was like, is this like psychological? He's like, I see what you do. I see what, not that that sounds like Louis, but I'm sorry. Like, but that I'm telling you, that'll put the fear of God in you. When you see Louis likes a post of yours and it's about Raquel. I was like the, the layers oh of, Oh, just scared the hell out of me. Anyways, Potomac will be coming up soon. Uh, do you, uh, do you, uh, did you watch welcome to crappy Lake with Sonia and Lou? No, I haven't watched it what? yet, but I will. I it's will. so good. It's so and it's I quick. Know, it's like twenty minute episodes. It's that's so what good. I've heard that it's really fun. I'm gonna watch it. I just haven't yet. Um, ninety day fiance UK premieres today. Roni premieres tonight. Uh, the new season of Below Deck Down Under premieres tomorrow tonight, Monday. Uh, with Asia, who we love, Below Deck Sailing Yacht wrapped up their season, which I loved. It didn't get great ratings. I loved it. That wrapped last week. Is there anything else that you're watching or you're looking forward to this week, Sophie? Oh, well, I talked about claim to fame. Um, I, I, I downloaded, <laughs> I downloaded oh. oh, the summer, so the summer I turned pretty season two and I downloaded that quarterback show on Netflix for the plane flight, um, which is about like Patrick Mahomes and some NFL quarterbacks. But what were you uh, going to say? Is that, I was going to ask you about the summer I turned pretty because I saw season two and oh, I was yeah. like, I bet, I was like, I bet this is a Sophie show. I bet because so, so many is. girls online were so excited about it. And I was like, oh, this you has know, to be. I feel like everyone just knows I love tween dramas. Like, you know how my personality trait is like Jason or not Jason, Jason Statham movies I do like, but Liam Neeson movies. Liam Neeson movies, CGI like creatures. I watched Avatar The Way of Water finally. <laughs> Um, and tween dramas like Outer Banks and like yeah. whenever there's like a treasure hunt show. I love that shit. That's Outer so, Banks, yeah. right? The treasure of hunt course. show you explained. Yeah. Yeah. But like, you know what I mean? Just any tween drama. So of course I love the summer I turned pretty. They only dropped three episodes for season two, which I was like ready to devour the rest of it. Like I need more Conrad. Well, I need more I Conrad downloaded in my life. I downloaded it for the flight and this was after we talked about it and you said, I couldn't, I, I couldn't do it yet. And I said, Oh, a show finds you when it's meant to find you. I downloaded all of the season two of the bear. I fucking loved it. Though. Oh like, yeah. I, 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 I was like, so good things. It. like, I loved it even more than the first season. And what I love is that Jeremy Allen white, the lead, he's the lead, but it's like the supporting cast has as much, if not more screen time than him. And so you know, obviously he's getting like, you know, he's so hot, blah, blah, blah. But the other cast members are cousin. Richie is so good. I want to hate it so bad. And I love it. I loved it. I thought it was so good and so excellent. The music and it is so, I mean, it's like late nineties, early aughts music that I love too. So I'm like, they're, they're playing REM. They're playing. I mean, it was just truly, I just think what an I amazing such season. Good things. I yeah, I just like, really give it i need to like just sit down and dedicate time to letting myself get into it one day and i wish you i wish you loved love island because i am so into the season of love island i also know i would love that show you would sure. you just you you totally would yeah. so this week you're coming out los angeles woo woo um and uh woo -woo! your grandpa's good twitter account is locked wait can we should we tweet God. at you to like try to get your account like how can we help with the twitter thing Oh my God, that would be, honestly, you guys, my dad did that, even though my dad doesn't have a lot of followers from one of his like burner accounts. Um, so if you have an account and want to tag myself and at Twitter, 
Twitter support for help because who knows when they'll get back to me. Wait, you Sophie, why didn't you? To, wait, Sophie, why didn't really you? Nice. Sophie, why didn't you ask me to do that? Why didn't? Why aren't you asking people to do that? I mean, I mean, I've just been kind of like offline for the weekend, so I don't really care that much yet because Blah. I've just been really offline spending time with my family. Tomorrow, I am going scorched fucking earth. Because tomorrow's Monday. <laughs> I mean, Monday, today. So for you guys, I'm going scorched earth. If anyone wants to go scorched earth with me, it would be so appreciated. It really would be. You know, I just, I think I, I need some help here. But if not, hopefully I'll figure it out and not have to pay a ransom. Yeah. Well, uh, let us wait. Actually, if you can just text me a quick thing of what we can all write on Twitter tomorrow, like just like a quick at Sofros, <gasps> yeah. at Twitter support. Like, let us, and we can all send it to you tomorrow. And in the meantime, she's on threads. So go follow her on threads. Um, yeah. Uh, you had I a great am. thread that I talked uh, I talked about your thread this week on one of the, I, maybe with Lex Nico or with, with somebody, uh, you said, this is all great and all, but when can I start being an asshole again? It was something like that. Oh, it, was, yeah. it was, I don't know what it was. And I thought it was, I thought that was kind of summed up the experience is that everybody's being really nice right now. And I think it is really refreshing. Like I opened up Twitter today and I had said, oh, fuck you like two times out loud when I was reading it and threads, I have not had that angry experience yet. So it's kind Everyone's of nice. so nice on threads so far. I really hope threads like, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Because I know they said their, their users were down like 50% after that first week. So like, guys, let's get everyone back on threads. Okay. I know I got to let you go, but we got to, I forgot about this too. And so Caroline Calloway, we got to talk about it. So next week oh, or God. the week after, uh, cause we, cause everybody, I fucking forgot. Sophie did a whole, uh, documentary about this and I got sent clips of you. I got sent and everybody said, I need Sophie's reaction. I need Sophie's reaction. I'm like, Sophie, like, I, like I, then I, I, then I was sent a clip of us actually talking about Caroline Calloway from like a year and a half ago. So I was like, Oh shit, this is wild. But I liked her uh, book. I yeah. need you to read her book. Oh my God. I I can't. I'm sorry. I know. I know. We'll I, we'll do this I and we'll do I this. I fucking can't with her. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do another one and we'll we'll really get into okay. it. Um, Caroline. It, okay, Twitter. Let's get the Twitter back and uh, let's get Sophie to BravoCon and uh, we will talk to you next time. So love you. Love you. Thanks.